Hey, everybody. Welcome back to an emergency episode of the Inside Nebraska podcast. <laughs> He's Greg Smith. I'm Zach Carpenter. It's Tuesday night, uh, about 1045 as we're sitting here and I had to get off the couch, get a uh, non-wrinkly shirt out of the closet and uh, get ourselves buttoned up for this emergency episode because, Greg, Donovan Rayola is coming back as Nebraska's offensive line coach. Sources told me late Tuesday night, a um, little before 10 p.m. that it was official. Rayola is coming back. Uh, no contract details are official yet. Expected to be a two-year new deal, but just mm-hmm. a little bit of a bombshell on Tuesday night. Rayola is the only staff member that's going to be retained from the old staff, uh, and he's the sixth overall um, out of the 10 on-field assistant coaches that are now officially um, in place for Matt Rule's staff. Just what are your initial thoughts right off the bat? Yeah, my, I mean, honestly, my first thought off the bat was, boy, this is going to rile up the fan base. Like, I, I think that that is and we've seen that both on, on social media and on uh, our uh, message board, the insiders board, that this has definitely got people going and people have strong opinions kind of on both sides of this one, I think. And it's it's kind of interesting because I, I think that there's a lot of different ways that you can go kind of with this conversation about Donovan Rayola being retained. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely has people talking, even though, like you said, late on a Tuesday night, um, it, it, the sixth full-time assistant to kind of be announced, it feels honestly like it's more, um, to be honest, like but that we've just kind of crossed the halfway point, uh, which means there's a lot more to come. Um, but yeah, the first thought is it's definitely going to get the people going. Yeah, and that's exactly what we expected. We We expected that if Rayola was going to be retained, that that there would be this type of um, reaction. I mean, when we first started, when Rule took over and we were talking about assistants that might get retained, Rayola would not have been at the top of that list. Uh, mm-hmm. I think um, that's a pretty unanimous feeling amongst um, mostly everyone that we didn't anticipate that he would be that he would be retained because Nebraska's offensive line struggled so much this year the entire season but I mean we're we've been saying it all all season long um you have Steve Marek our other staff writer um another staff writer inside Nebraska who covers football um we knew that the personnel was not was not up to par it was not a big 10 level um even middle of the road big 10 level offensive line they were one of the worst offensive line units in the country uh, or in the Big Ten, and probably one of the worst in the country. I know there's uh, people who have been saying that, um, just comparing it to other Nebraska offensive lines. But again, it comes back to that personnel question of, of can Rayola take this group to the next level? And now he gets another off season to try and uh, to try and make that happen. Yeah, but we have, but also, and that's totally true. But we also have to be really honest about this. And I've been thinking about it since kind of you broke the story. Is that we just don't know, right? Like we, it, it's it's totally within the realm of possibility. And if we're being totally fair to Donovan here, um, I know what the offensive line looked like. We saw it. We were at all the games. Um, but it, like you said, with the personnel, but it also goes deeper than that. Like you can't in one off season undo like, you know, multiple years of development with that offensive line that clearly was going in the wrong direction, both. And we saw that from both the performance on the field, but also because they had a new coach in Donovan Rayola, right? You also can't undo years of strength and conditioning. That was also not up to par when it comes to big 10 level standards um, as well. And I think it's important to note, and yes, it will be the recruiting guy mentioning recruiting but Donovan was not able to pick his own portal players I've reported that like this past offseason he was not able to do that and he did not recruit any of those guys that were on that roster and so we just don't know what his prowess is either on the recruiting trail or when it comes to you know his eye for talent on the in on the recruiting trail in in portal players as well which is kind of a big deal if you want to evaluate you know what's going on. Yeah, it, like you said, with the development piece of it, it's the most uh, it's the most prominent developmental position on a football roster is <laughs> offensive line, especially at the college level. So, yep. for all the reasons you said, um, one off season isn't going to undo an entire ten years worth of of fundamental um, breakdowns and not being up to par. So, I'm interested, really interested to see what 
what Rayola does with another with, with another offseason and with Matt Rule, I mean, putting confidence in in Rayola that he can get the job done. And that's something that I know I was told uh, by by sources that that um, that rule respects and appreciates Rayola's NFL background, the techniques he teaches. Um, and uh, there's there's some strength to that uh, going forward. Uh, um, as we're looking at an offensive line that desperately needs that facelift. But l- like you said, I think it goes back to some of that strength and conditioning, um, that, that aspect of it. And that's going to get overhauled too. So, uh, right. It, definitely. Yeah. It, it should be, hopefully would be, um, a new, new look offensive line for the Huskers. And, and I know talking with people, um, the, the, there was a disconnect there between, Rayola and some of the old staff members um, between here's what the offensive line is good at Rayola uh, paraphrasing for what he would, he would say he (laughs) knew what the offensive line strengths and weaknesses are. And there was uh, some input there uh, to, to the other, other staff members that this is what we need to do going forward. And I think maybe there's some stubbornness there and it, it just didn't, it, kind of fell on deaf ears and now I think he he has a staff now in place that is gonna is gonna listen to those uh those experiences and that uh that knowledge yeah absolutely and I think that going back to your point about kind of Donovan's like why Donovan would be attractive to Matt Rule based on his NFL background and the techniques that he teaches I think that it's worth mentioning that we have heard from multiple people that know football and respected offensive line people that they really believe in Donovan Rayola right like we've heard that kind of across the board um and whether that's you know some of the people from his NFL time other people in college high school coaches like and I know that you know the Sledge family is is a little biased because they're sending you know their kid out to Nebraska but this that, that's an offensive line family right and you know Sam Fletcher's dad Bob that played offensive line at Nebraska as well he's someone that's super high on Donovan Rayola as well I think that I can I can see how his background and techniques could match up with Matt Rule um and it, it, it's it's funny we talk about kind of those young aggressive coaches we don't know that part of it, that part of the equation for Ayola on the recruiting trail for the reasons we laid out before, but we definitely know that he's got that fire when it comes to actually coaching his position. Like the little bit that we've seen either in practice or in warmups, he gets after it as hard as anyone. Um, so he does have that. But again, I, I say all of that, but I will also underscore the point that I totally understand why fans have angst about the situation right now because of what you saw the end result end up being on game days on Saturday even if they seem to kind of steady the ship or at least not be you know so bad as they were at points early in the season late in the year um but it, but there's just so much there's a big question mark there moving forward on how that's going to shake out yeah and then last thing I want to to um sort of set the table for you is is to hit on a couple of recruiting points if you if you uh you have anything to say i mean one point from me because I know fans are going to ask Donovan Rayola's nephew, Dylan Rayola is five-star quarterback in the 2024 class. He's the number one overall prospect, prospect number one quarterback in the country, depending on what service you look at. The point is he's a, he's a downright stud. He is still committed to Ohio state. And I expect that commitment to see through to signing day. So even with Matt rule retaining Donovan Rayola, his uncle, I, I, the, Dylan Rayola piece of this, the um, any potential outside hopes of flipping his commitment from Ohio State to Nebraska did not play a part in this. And I know that people are going to ask, so I just had to say that real quick. Um, but recruiting-wise, I don't know if you have any thoughts on who he might be going to talk to, who he might be targeting now that he can officially get back on the road and recruit. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do think to echo your point, I think that the Dylan aspect of this needed to be way down the list on the things of re- list of reasons to keep him. Um, and I, I, I'm with you 100 percent on that. So but on where he would where Donovan could go to recruit, that is TBD, right? I'll be kind of that'll be one of my top priorities here over the next couple of days is to figure that out, um, because Nebraska does have a huge official visit weekend coming up. We'll probably have some news here soon on some guys that are coming in um, from that offensive line group. Um, and I do think that Donovan obviously will be a lot more involved. But like I said before, we just didn't we don't know because he had three recruits in this 2023 recruiting class 
all three of them in-state guys, all guys with potential, but all guys that were likely going to come to Nebraska either way, um, so long as they got scholarship offers, right? So everything that we see going forward on the offensive line will kind of be new, which is a really weird situation given he was on staff for an entire year, and we don't have any idea of what his kind of recruiting profile is, even though he has three commits in this class right now. Yeah, and there's some mystery there, unknowns. For the last week, there's some mystery and unknowns with, with Rayla's situation of, well, he we know he's in the building. He is he's <laughs> right. still, he's still being put to work, but he's not on the road uh, recruiting. He's not officially <laughs> been tabbed as the as the offensive line coach and being retained. But now that those questions are put to bed. Um, Rayla is in the fold, and now some of those foundational pieces that Trev Alberts and, and Matt Rule – um, wish to have in this program to to build a winner, build a, a consistent contender in the conference is, is now there. And um, like you said, big recruiting weekend coming up. So now um, you can bring in some offensive linemen um, and have have some more confidence and uh, be able to say, yes, this will be my coach if I come here. Yeah, so, that, that'll help a ton. <laughs> yes. Yep. All that mystery is gone too. Um, it's not mysterious is we're going to get this uh, this up. And then we're going to go down to bed um, here on this uh, late Tuesday night. So once again, for Greg Smith, I'm Zach Carpenter, and we'll catch you guys again next time.